and it turned out that God used that or something they said or then you can speak into their lives and you can believe things. Amen. Amen. Well, um, as they make their way back, I just want to drop a little word uh, for us. You know, we are celebrating Thanksgiving. It's this coming Thursday. And Thanksgiving, as you all know, is a day when everybody supposedly pauses uh, to give thanks to God for the things that we normally take for granted. How many know that we take a lot of things that God does for us for granted? But all throughout the country, even people who don't normally serve God pause to give thanks. I don't know if they're sure who they're giving thanks to, but thank God that we know who we're giving thanks to. How many say amen? You know, I was thinking about Thanksgiving. Have you ever done something really significant for someone and they didn't thank you? It doesn't feel so good, right? When you do something, you kind of anticipate that someone at least will say thank you. Even something as simple as opening the door for somebody. You ever open the door for somebody and they just walk through and they didn't say a word? Right? And you just look at them like, really? So even our motives for doing things, we want that thank you, don't we? It, it just seems like the right thing, doesn't it? You do something or someone does something for you and you thank them. You know, uh, growing up, Missy and I were always careful to teach the boys to be thankful when someone does something for you. We would just be on them. You give them thanks, you know. So if we go to a restaurant, the waitress will be the most thank person that day from this family. Anything she, oh, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, thank you. <laughs> one time one of them stops and says, boy, you guys don't stop saying thank you. What's wrong with your family? But... It's good to say thank you for those things that people do for you. Amen? Even Jesus gave thanks while he was here on this earth. One of those times was 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, when he was teaching us about remembering him and when he broke the bread. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, when he broke the bread, and he said, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me when he had given thanks but here's what I, I the question that came to me did, did you ever wonder why God tells us to give thanks because God is not like us I mean you know we hold the door open for somebody and we expect a thank you in fact we kind of need it but God doesn't need it he doesn't need my thanks and he doesn't need your thanks it's the right thing to do. He deserves it, right? We were just singing that. You deserve it. He deserves all the praise and the thanksgiving that we can offer up. But God doesn't live off of us being thankful. It's just the right thing to do. So what is his motive when he asks us to praise him since he doesn't need that to sustain himself because God is all sufficient. He's all known. He doesn't need one thing from me and you. Why is it that he tells us to give thanks? I came across uh, an article uh, from Psychology Today. Let me just read you two paragraphs from it. It's very interesting. It says this. This is a totally secular magazine. They're into psychology and all of that. Listen to what it says. Thankfulness is an emotion expressing appreciation for what one has, as opposed to, for instance, a consumer-driven emphasis of what, one, of what one wants or they need. Tossing off the half-hearted thanks won't cut it. Deep gratitude has come from within and in a meaningful way. This spotlights the highly social aspect of feeling grateful. Gratitude is also getting a great deal of attention as a facet of positive psychology. Practicing gratitude means paying attention to what we are thankful for to the degree of feeling more kind and compassionate toward the world at large. 
It can motivate people to make positive changes in their lives. Studies show that people can deliberately cultivate gratitude by literally counting their blessings and writing letters of thanks, for example. Interesting thought from someone who doesn't know the Lord. This proactive acknowledgement can increase well-being, health, and happiness. Being grateful, and especially the expression of it, is also associated with increased energy, optimism, and empathy. Good things happen inside your body when you're thankful. In other words, you say thanks well enough, but the, the attitude of you being thankful makes you a healthier person. Isn't that interesting? In other words, it's your, like your body is saying, yeah, that's what you were created for. Because you see, we were created to be like God. And we just read how Jesus was thankful when he broke the bread. So he made us like him. And when you begin to do and be like who God is, then you begin to feel more alive than you've ever felt before. It does you good to be thankful. Have you ever been around someone who's not thankful at all? Have you? It's pretty miserable, isn't it? They're kind of shriveled. Their spirit is shriveled. They're bitter. They're angry. They're not thankful about anything. They complain about everything. And they have all sorts of issues, health-wise and otherwise. But I want to go beyond thanksgiving tonight, beyond the simple act of giving thanks for things that God does. I want to give God glory beyond giving God thanks for what he does. And there's a portion of scripture that I was reading that really stuck out to me, especially in this season. I read it a couple of weeks ago. It's found in the book of Acts in chapter 5, and it was when the apostles had gotten in trouble once again for teaching and preaching about Jesus, and they were brought before the Sanhedrin uh, to answer for speaking about Jesus. So after they convened, uh, they, they wanted really to kill him, but uh, they were scared of the crowd. And so they got their heads together and they figured this is what they're going to do. So starting in verse 40 of chapter 5 of the book of Acts, it says this. They called in the apostles and had them flogged. Then they ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. The apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. They left thankful and rejoicing that they were able to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. That's beyond Thanksgiving. That's something else. That's another territory. But I want to be there. See, because if you can be there, there's nothing on this earth that can come against you. You are immune from anything that the world can throw at you. How could it be that these apostles haven't been flogged? You know, flogging the way they used to do it, they used to stop one last short of what they considered 40 to kill you. They used to give you the 40 minus 1. And guess what? It was no pretty picture. But after being severely beaten like this, right, and reprimanded, they left thankful and rejoicing. How, how does that happen? Let me tell you how it happens. It can only happen when you're so in love with Jesus, when he has so circumcised your heart, when your life is about Serving him and loving him. Joe Pietanza was talking about the most important commandment, which is to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love others like you love yourself. That's the second one that's like the first one. And when you do that, guess what happens? You live. You are more alive when that happens than you've ever been. Not that somebody loves you but that the love of God is in you to go out to people that usually you wouldn't love. 
Because as the Bible says, it's easy to love people that love you. Isn't that easy? I mean, who can't do that? The Bible says even sinners do that. But then God taught us to love beyond. But you can only do that with the love of God. So imagine being so in love with Jesus that it doesn't matter what we're going through. How many have been through some stuff here? Raise your hand. If you've been through some stuff, life has been, life is a, is a piece of work, isn't it? My goodness. But I wonder if your testimony is like mine. Because the more I've been through, the more I've fallen in love with Jesus. Not less. Not less. Not, oh, man, now you're going to. No, it's almost like your eyes are open further. And you see that what's down here on this earth is really nothing. You're not letting go of anything. When you let go of what the world has to offer, you're grabbing onto the most valuable, precious treasure that there is in the entire universe. And so as you slip away and cut that umbilical cord to what has tied you to this earth, you see the glory of who the Lord is, and you fall more and more in love with him, and less and less the world has anything, any hold on you. So that you can even face persecution and still be so thankful let me tell you the people in other parts of the world that are being persecuted right now for serving Jesus they put us to shame with how thankful they are to their God so I want to remind myself and I want to remind you before that day comes on Thanksgiving yes give him thanks and do it better than you ever did this year don't just eat your turkey. Have a time of thanksgiving around that table. I mean, from your heart. But then after thanksgiving is done, when you get up on Friday, guess what? Be more thankful still. And then when Saturday rolls around, be even more thankful still. And then when we get here on Sunday, let this be a celebration of thanksgiving to our God. There is no one like our God. No one like our God. Doesn't matter what we go through on this earth. It doesn't matter what we face. We have eternity in front of us. There will be one day when all of this will pass away. While we're here, we're not alone. He's going to help us. You heard Alicia. She worked her way up here, and she gave glory to God. So did Marquita. She got up here on, with, with missing one leg, was still walking by the grace of God. Joe got up here. He's been through a lot of stuff as well. Robbie giving glory to God. All the things that he went through, all that heartache, you know what it's making us do? It's making us love God more, isn't it? And isn't it something the way God's worth? You heard Robbie's testimony along with his wife, Anita. So guess what they, they're doing now? They head up our special needs ministry. Isn't that the way God does things? He puts, who, who better to understand the needs of people that will come in here who have special needs than someone who has been through it? Who better to love on some people? That's how God does it. He forms you. He, he's like molding you into something that will bring glory to him and will bless many, many people. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I'm going to give us all an opportunity.